Happy to have on the podcast our latest colleague on the beat, and he's actually just a colleague rejoining us on the beat because a couple of years ago uh, he was at the Daily Illini uh, covering for the University of Illinois student newspaper, and now he is covering Illinois even more professionally uh, for the Decatur Herald and Review. He's taking the Joey Wagner spot. Uh, at the Decatur have, Herald have, Review. I've subbed in. <laughs> <laughs> James Boyd, now at the Decatur Herald and Review, Lee Enterprises, so you'll be writing for St. Louis Post-Dispatch, uh, a bunch of newspaper, Panagraph across the state. Uh, James, congratulations, man. We're so happy to, to see a familiar face uh, getting on the beat, and, and one that I know uh, was deserving of this job. So congratulations. What was this like for you, the process of getting this gig? It was uh, kind of crazy. Like I said um, yesterday during our first like press conference all together, um, I really wasn't searching for something different. It was kind of one of those things where they told me like, hey, we created this new position where it's just gonna be straight Illini. Then when Joey was on the beat, it was more like Illini and also some preps. Um, and they told me like, hey, you're the University of Illinois grad. Um, we think you'd be a great fit for it. And I was really like, contemplate, man, do I wanna leave my family? Like I'm, I'm very big on like being close to my family and things like that. But at the end of the day, it was kind of like, I'm young, don't have any kids, don't have a girlfriend right now. Like I don't have any, thing tying me to like you know my hometown or that area so why not uh get out while i'm young and try to get on the bigger beat yeah i'll have joey hook you up here in a minute about all the decatur spots you gotta get filled <laughs> but uh, coming from the northwest indiana times and i remember justin breen who's an illinois grad was a sports editor there a long time yeah. ago um courtney linehan i believe worked there so i know these names might not mean a lot to other people but there was a lot of illinois grads that have worked there uh what was that experience like for you would you do there and, and how to kind of get you ready for this gig yeah so i was basically just mainly all preps um we had a little bit of college stuff, but the thing is we actually followed like anybody that graduated from like a region high school, which is what they call it, you know, from Indiana, the region. Um, we followed them all the way up to through their pro career. Um, so, you know, I've, I've done camps with Etuan Moore, Glenn Robinson, the third, who's from that area. Um, you know, Darius Garland, from Cleveland, he's from Gary. So like I've met a lot of these guys and Kawan Short, you know, plays in the NFL. So it, that was kind of surprising to me. I thought it was like strictly high school sports. It's a situation where I would just have like random things to do. Like uh, Doug Plank from the Bears came and spoke at like an event in Northwest Indiana. And I had to ask my dad, who the heck is Doug Plank? And uh, he's like, he's one of the hardest hitting dudes ever. He was really cool. Did some stuff with Michael Singletary, one-on-one -on -one interview with him as well, you know, for an event they had out there. So it was really fun. But mainly I would say 95% preps. And, uh, you know, the last year or so was really crazy just – trying to keep track of everything with COVID issues and, and, and that things of that nature. So it was a grind, but uh, one that I enjoyed, I loved it. It was fun. I got stopped occasionally because um, people thought I was still in high school. So that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, James, I'll say like all three of us here came up covering preps. Like that's what we did. And I, I mean, we love our job, right? Like covering Illinois athletics is freaking awesome. You get to do a lot of cool stuff. But covering preps is still so special to me. Like, there's just something about it. Like, you you feel like you have a footprint in a community and you can share these stories. And people want to share. Like, Illinois has got really good SIDs. Don't get me wrong. But it's easy to just text a coach. Like, hey, I'm going to be out of practice today. And this yeah. is what I want to write about. And you're there. And, and it matters. And that's what, I mean, Jeremy and I have talked a lot about it, how that shaped kind of how we do things. Did, did you have the same experience? Do you value that element of coming up like we do yeah i, I kind of equate it to like just getting out the mud basically it's not glamorous a lot of the time um and i think the biggest like uh just like i don't want to say cult culture shock i guess was like you know coming up with a uh, daily line and then also have freelance for the ap for the line you know going to games you get printouts of everything you get the stats they keep that for you and i get to you know my first prep football game and i gotta keep my stats and you know i had never done that before and i was like I don't even have like a chart to like keep track of this. So like, I just made one in my notebook that day. And, and um, you know, that was kind of weird and, and then having a tweet and then, you know, with like Illinois in, in college sports in general, there's always like some formalness to like interviews and things. People are going to be available in high school. You got to like run, run people down. They might get on the bus and just leave. Um, so, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. And I, I feel like you just had to, it made me appreciate um just what people on the preps beat do because there's some people that do it in indiana that have been doing it for a long time and i'm like man this is you never got tired of this you know so it was a it was it was a good learning experience for me and i think it just makes it easier now like when i got to state we had a couple teams that made it to state when we got to state that was the easiest game story of the year because they keep the stats for you you know they got they got printouts and everything they got 
interviews, like, you know, in press rooms, things like that. So I get to stay and just, you know, knock out my game store with, you know, with, with no issues. I, I want to interrupt here, Joey, just because I, I, I loved everything James said there. And maybe it's the old man in me, the way I came up like, <laughs> for the news gazette. But it's just like, I, I love, you know, people work in the prep speed and work in their way up. And I, th I think, I don't want to say it's, it, it's makes you humble, but it just, it, I loved writing those stories and some of the best stories I think I've written are in the high school beat and they do matter so much to the people you're covering. But I think the skills you get at that level in reporting, and I know we're getting kind of, you know, inside baseball here, but I, I love like when I'm thinking of hiring people or even interns, like I'm thinking, man, I like people who were on the high school beat because if you're on that, you love doing it, James. And like, um, you love doing this job and you yeah. love telling stories. And, and I think you just have a skill set and a work ethic uh, that some other people might get. Because I know a lot of people, even myself, I would have loved to have gone from Daily Illini to Division One beat, right? And I know yeah. everyone thinks yeah. they probably are good enough to do that. But I, I think being on those high school beats uh, made Joey better and it certainly made me better. So how, do you feel the same way? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I told the story before I actually um, applied for NBC Sports Chicago and uh, had five interviews with them um, fresh out of college, few months after I graduated, you know, I'm thinking after five interviews, I probably got it. And then uh, I didn't get it. And it, cr it crushed. It. I was like, man, like, oh, this is this is like, oh, so that hurt. And I remember thinking like, man, I really want to do this. And, you know, it's like a name thing. You tell somebody, hey, I'm working with NBC Sports Chicago. I'm from that area. My family's like, oh, man, that's, that's you know, I was thinking on my head like that'd be really cool to kind of say. And then you, uh, you know, things happened where I ended up at the times of Norfolk, Indiana. Fun fact, that was the only job I applied for in Indiana. Um, I remember just Googling like where Munster, Indiana was from Romeoville. And it was about an hour drive. And I was like, all right, if I had to, I could do it. And I was walking to my summer job. Um, I was a food, like a waiter at a assisted living home. And I walked, walking to my job, I got a, a, a call about the job and I couldn't believe it. And um, just getting back to the point, it was super humbling to have that experience. And I think it's one that, um, again, just taught me the value of, being out and about and being in a community. I mean, you tell the best stories when you're there. So even though I live in Illinois, anybody who uh, I wrote about will tell you, I tried to show up as much as I could. Like I drove my car so much. I, I bought a brand new car, a brand new Honda when I graduated in May of 2018, and I got 80,000 miles on it. So I was always in my car. Like I burned through every true crime podcast there is, um, but I just wanted to be there and, and to enjoy it and to, and to grind it out. And again, like you said, you learn a lot about yourself and what you're capable of. And then it also gives you confidence to be like resourceful. Things do not always go your way. There's not going to be Wi-Fi. There's not always going to be a place to write. Um, games will go long. There'll be JV overtime, which is, you know, the bane of my existence. But I mean, hey, the, those are the things that kind of mold you and shape you and prepare you for moments like this. Man, I will say there are probably some like sports writers who are much older than us who are like, you guys still had it easy covering high school, <laughs> like going to a pay phone and, and calling in. and reading it. Right. No, I had no experience with that at all. Yeah. Like, no, I had it good, man. I had a, I got an extra phone here that they've given me. So I was able to hotspot a lot of different places. So I never had any of that, like that archaic old stuff. <laughs> I, re I remember when I was a junior in college was the first time I started string. I had to you know, drive to Bloomington to cover like Michael Shore and Centennial play at that time. And I didn't even have a laptop at the time, guys. Like that's, that's what was happening in 2007 with me. Like, so I had to I'd race back and write my story in like 20 minutes in my fraternity house while everyone else is partying on, on a Friday. Oh, man. And then, and then I, finally, I finally got a laptop and McDonald's was the place that had Wi-Fi. We all go to a McDonald's parking lot and we type out our stories uh, there. So that, that was a game changer once I got to, to Paxton. But anyway, Joey, go ahead. James, I thought it was cool. You said, so you had a part-time job as a, as a dishwasher, right? Yeah. Oh, man. I did all kinds of stuff. When I was in school, I worked a lot. And people would always ask, like, man, why are you working so much? And um, to be completely honest, uh, when you're at a school of this caliber, there's a lot of kids who have parents that could just send them money, you know, for rent and, and things like that. And um, I was actually in the dorms all four years. I couldn't get enough money to actually move out on my own into an apartment. And it was better just me to just take the loans, honestly, mm -hmm. and go that route. And um, I was an RA for a little bit, trying to save money like that. I did everything. I was I was an RA. Um, I refereed for Campus Rec. That was fun. Um, I actually played against uh, Bennett Williams and uh, a couple of other guys. Um, you know, uh, Nate Hobbs in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a rec league game. Oh, my own. We lost by like five, but I, you know, I had a little, little game in me, so I was fun. But um, I did it. I did everything I could. I washed dishes for a while um, as a dishwasher. 
uh, working with his little manager at the at the Ike, you know, dining hall, and I mean, passed out newspapers from Daily Illini whenever I could to make some extra cash. I mean, I literally, my mom always joking. She was like, "Man, you have so many W twos," but it was like I had a, this vision of like when I graduate, I want to get a new car, I want to be able to have like money to, to save up, and it's funny because moving back down here. Um, I used some of that money that I saved up back then just to get down here. So, yeah, I did it all. I mean, there were a lot of uh, <laughs> late nights, early mornings, uh, writing stuff in class. I shouldn't pay attention. Um, but again, it, it's all humbling. It, it comes down to how bad you want it. Like, do you want this to be your job? And I think that more than anything told me that, hey, this is what I love to do because I was willing to do some crazy stuff to get it done. I mean, waking up 4 a.m. to knock out two stories and then take a final at like nine or whatever and cram and all types of crazy stuff. I didn't really sleep in college. I see better now, but um, yeah, it was fun. It was a grind. And again, something that you got to just want it. So I worked retail for like eight years, maybe and, and like full time in college, man. It was, it was a grind. Like you, you. I remember when I first got my job, like that phone call, they're like, Hey, it was back home. They're like you moved back home, be the assistant sports editor. And I went to bed that night. I don't know if you had a similar thing. And I was like, Holy crap. Like, I'm in, like my foot is in the door. And, and after that, it's like, I'm in control of the rest for the most part, right? I mean, I know this field, there's not a lot of control, but if you work hard, like your foot can stay in that door for a long time. I don't know if you had a similar thing, but like that feeling, that first job, I'm like, dang, like this is it. Yeah, I mean, so my summer job was always at the assisted living home. And then when I graduated, uh, I had bought my car and I, you know, it was a good like high school type of, or summer college job. You didn't have any bills, but I was like, man, I got my first car note. A couple other things I want to help out my family with, like rent and things like that. And like I say rent like this because my parents didn't really charge me that much, but enough to like have some responsibility around the house. And so I went and got a job at uh, one of like the local warehouses by my house. It was a Lego warehouse. And I hate Legos to this day because there were so many boxes and it was so hard. Like no joke. It was really, really hard. And my dad, um, he didn't uh, go to college. He's worked manual labor his entire life. Um, so that was like my glimpse into his world and why he always pushed me and my sister. I have a twin sister that attended North, Northern Illinois, who graduated recently as well. And um, he really, really pushed us to like, hey, this is the rush you got to take. You got to go to school so you don't have to do what I do. And I did what he did for about three weeks. And that's when I got the call from Times Northwest Indiana and got the job. And I remember going to bed that night like, OK, like, you know, I, I've gotten a glimpse of why he wanted me to. Because I mean, people can tell you, but I was working like 12 hour shifts and lifting boxes and stuff. And I was thinking he's done this for you know, 30, 40 years to provide for me, um, you know, there, there's no reason why I shouldn't like take this opportunity at the times and make the most of it. So people will say like, man, how do you drive and do all this stuff? And I'm like, man, I've seen my mom and my dad grind it out for so long for me to have this chance. So when I got there, I was like, man, I got it made. Like all I gotta do is drive and write. Like that's it. That's it. I'm sold. So, so James, take me into your last year uh, at the Daily Illini. Um, what that was like to, to cover, you know, big Illinois football, basketball programs. I, I forget which one you covered at the time, but, um, and, and how that prepared you for what you're about to do now, where Illinois basketball is way better than when you were last year. And, and Illinois football now has a, a new coach in Brett Bielema. Yeah, I'll say this real quick. I had to, so when I was at, you know, the Times in, in Northwest Indiana, um, I wore a whole bunch of Illinois stuff. Cause I just, I bought a lot of it because I just like Nike. I like the school that I go to. And so I wore a bunch of Illinois stuff those first couple of years. And oh, I got so much from like, you know, the Purdue fans and the IU fans and, you know, you know, people telling me we're terrible and all this other stuff. And um, now obviously I'd be more of like a professional guy and I can't wear all that stuff anymore. And I'm looking through my shirts like, man, what can I wear? Um, but like that last uh, year of the Daily Illini, just getting back to the point, um, it was humbling because, and I remember, I think it was maybe Shannon Ryan was saying this, it's like, you really learn how good of a writer you are when you cover a team that isn't that great, quite frankly. You gotta get resourceful. You gotta find stories that are still intriguing that's other than this person scored this many points, they won this many games. But um, it was a really fun experience. Um, ended up interning for the AP, which was intense. I remember being ripped apart after my first like uh, game freelancing and that was, to this day, I, I remember almost, I was about to quit. Like, I, no joke. I don't think I think I've told the story before. I was legitimately thinking like, I'm not doing this, and I'm going to be like this unhappy, this miserable. Like, I know it's going to be hard. Editor was really tough on me, and I remember I was about to leave, and uh, Shannon Ryan walked up to me as I was walking out, and, and kind of like put her arm around me and told me like, Hey, you know the, the lead that you threw out to your editor, the one he kind of like squashed down. It's a good lead. Like, you know, hey, this is a 
this is a chance for you to like, you know, I'm going to take that leaf at, for the Chicago Tribune and use it. And, you know, so don't think that any idea you have is just terrible. And to this day, that's the reason why I kind of stuck with it. And um, learning at AP was crazy because they're so strict about everything. There's not much like color. It's yeah. just like, boom, like this person scores, this, scored this, this person scored that. This is the winner. This is the loser up next. And like, you're done. And obviously you go back and get quotes and stuff like that. But um, that really helped a lot to prepare me for the prep speed. And even now, because I know if it gets tight on deadline, um, I just know in the back of my mind, like, hey, there's always like that AP trigger where it's like, I'm sorry, but my colorful lead is going to be one sentence and I'm going to get to the point. And hey, I got to live for another day. So yeah. it was uh, it was fun seeing it come full circle. But I definitely learned a lot that first, uh, really that last year. I mean, I'd work my way up. Men's gymnastics wasn't always the most glamorous beat. Shout out to Justin Spring. Great guy. One of the best. Um, yeah, cover. I mean, you said grind it. Cover. Yeah, Justin's one of the best to cover. I, I do want to go back to uh, that. Does not surprise me. Shannon would take that role with you. Uh, getting to know Shannon and and a lot of fans can have whatever whatever opinion they want of her, but like uh, she's really good at her job and she's always been great to everyone else on the beat. Um, and I think especially younger people, I've become friends uh, with Shannon. Uh, but what what was that like? Because I, I know mentors meant a lot to me. Whether it was Jim Ross or with the News Gazette. Paul Clee, I more just watched, but he was always great to me. And then Brett Dawson uh, became one of my biggest mentors who was at the News Gazette, you know, covered Kentucky and Calipari and then the NBA. Uh, what did that mean to you? It meant everything to me and to this day. And um, I mean, if I saw her tomorrow, um, you know, I tell her I'm fully vaccinated and give her a hug. So <laughs> she's, I mean, she's, she was, the, the, she's one of the best writers to me um, as evidenced by her many awards and things like that. But just from a human standpoint, um, not everyone on press row is as friendly all the time. Um, and I get it's competition. I, I enjoy it. Um, you know, still to the, even when I wasn't on the Illini I beat, just in Northwest Indiana, I was reading everyone's stories. I was reading Joe, I was reading you, I was reading Gavin, I was reading Shannon, I was reading everybody um, just to see, okay, hey, man, this is, this is their style. This is what they did. And maybe I can use that in my story. And so you're always trying to take something from somebody, somebody else to learn, but to have someone kind of like put the competition aside for a second and, and, and tell me that, you know, uh, I wasn't a complete failure. Uh, it felt pretty good. And um, she gave me her number and uh, told me to reach out. I had a few questions after that. And I remember one time uh, she couldn't make a game. So they ran my story in, in the Chicago Tribune. And she like took a picture of it and said, hey, like, you know, you're doing it. And I remember thinking like, what? Like I'm in the Chicago Tribune? Like this is, this is crazy. So um, that meant everything to me. And like I said, to this day, I'm indebted to her. Like I, I would not be a writer, seriously, if she had not just taking the time because I, I love my happiness and I was thinking, Hey, I can go a different route and, you know, hopefully, you know, find something else I love to do, but it turns out this is what I love to do and, and what I hope to be doing for a long time. Man, Shannon. So I think a lot of people have a Shannon story, but I don't know that we hear enough of them just because she's always. The around. goat, man, the goat. <laughs> Great. Which I know Jeremy hates the, the term goat. But I'm <laughs> no, throw no, it out there. I'm good with goat. <laughs> you mean she's the greatest of all time? Go for it. I can't stand the term goaded. Like I got. <laughs> oh, I got. I got you. Got you. Can't. I saw you and Gavin having a debate on Twitter about that. I'll leave that alone. No, you um, just. You if, if it's greatest of all time, if you think she is the greatest of all time, or you know Michael is the greatest of all time at basketball or whatever, it's fine if you call them goat. I love that. I, I've, I've accepted some of these Gen Z terms. I generally <laughs> like them, um, but goaded makes no sense because it's like it takes out the meaning of the word goat. Like you can only have yeah. one greatest of all time. Okay. You can't <laughs> goat everybody here. Anyway, Joey. So I, I'm just curious, like your experience, James, like the Chicago Tribune, when you were there, that's how I was like when I took over for Tupper and I'm like, Oh, I'm emailing the post dispatch now. And like, cause I went to school at Edwardsville and you follow I'm a Cardinals fan. So you follow a lot of them. And you're like, yeah. Oh crap. And I remember, Okay, I, I was at a bar in, in Edwardsville. I'd gone back to visit my friends and they had the sports section up above the urinal. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> shoot. Like, that's, that's awesome. But what are you looking forward to with this? Because like there's, for people who don't know, and not to, to steal you, it's supposed to dispatch, it's Decatur, Mattoon, Bloomington, the Quad Cities. And, and I don't know if they've added any more, but those are the five that, that it was. Like, what, what was appealing about that to you? How, how do you approach that? Because it's all a little not to get inside but it's all a little different with, with deadlines and all of that but, but what do you like about that I think it's just a bigger audience frankly um I loved being like this integral part of the community in the region um we got I believe good numbers from the stuff that was written but um 
I think I, I like the challenge of having more eyes on your stuff and having more people to criticize or uh, praise what you do. And I put that all that in air quotes because um, I don't really give too much to like the praise or like the criticism, unless it's like a flagrant like thing where you spell somebody's name wrong, which is, you know, to this day, like when I write a story, I'm thinking, hey, if I'm on deadline, it's, it's crunch time, get the score right, get the names right, everything else pretty much is like forgivable. Um, so if it's something egregious like that, hey, I, did, I deserve that. But um, I think I enjoy just having that feedback. And I'm sure with the alignment, especially as of late, you know, <laughs> there's always somebody saying something. I don't even say as of late, just in general, there's always somebody saying something about the team, wanting to know more about this player, that player, this coach. And I, I think that, you know, having an opportunity to share those stories will just, you know, invigorate me to write more stories and have more ideas and, and see what people are really talking about on Twitter, on social media, and things like that. So that was appealing, man, just having a bigger platform. And it's not like a conceited thing. Like, I don't really care, like, what, like, the title of the paper is or things like that. It's just, you know, is the work good enough to be on this platform? And, and they trust me enough to do that. And, and I'm hoping to, you know, make good on that promise. That's awesome, man. That's really – the thing that I, I'll tell you I struggled with when I came with Jeremy, and I don't know if you experienced this. Like, there's something about – like just kind of feeling like you were a voice that mattered in the high school beat. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like, okay, if I write something, people are going to know, like, this might be worth my time to read because you've worked hard for a few years to get that. And then like, it, I struggled a little bit coming to a bigger beat. And, and even when I like first took over for Tupper and I'm like, Oh yeah, dude, I'm not that person. <laughs> it, uh, and I'm not saying you won't be but, like, that was something I struggled with. And you, you have to kind of work your way through that. It, it's just such a different dynamic from being like, the guy who's like, okay, James broke this news or James wrote this feature. Yeah. And then you have to kind of like start over a little bit for lack of better terms and get yourself back up to there. And it's obviously doable, but it's just a lot to kind of think about. I thought about that a lot. Yeah. I mean, when I started off on in, in Northwest Indiana, uh, it was like that. I mean, the people who were before me were there for, you know, 20 plus years and I'm only 25. So they're, they're like, who's this new kid? And frankly, who's this new black kid writing about, you know, all of our, our, our players and, and athletes and coaches. Um, some of the stuff that I did and I wrote about, they probably didn't always like or the, the angle that I took. But um, there was also like the flip side of just being young and, and trying to use that to my advantage, like tagging the kids on Instagram, tagging them on Twitter. And um, what's funny is I used to get a lot of story ideas from Instagram, from Facebook, from Twitter. And, you know, even though I'm not working there anymore, I'm still getting like friend requests from like players I wrote about and their parents and things like that. So I, I do, in a sense, miss that. And a big part of me wishes I could be in two places at once, especially when it came to like under, you know, underserved communities, um, like in Gary, Hammond, East Chicago, um, kids of color, black kids, um, that, you know, the constant thing that I heard was, man, no one really came around unless we were winning. Like you'll, you'll at least stop by to see if there's a good feature story, even if we're not winning. So I'm hoping that, you know, wherever the beat goes next, they continue to have that presence in those communities, but you're 100 correct when it's when, when it, it hurts to like, you know, leave and then I have to work my way back up. But I, I don't I don't mind work because I feel like as dedicated as I am to and I know that I really care about it, um, that that will handle itself. But you know, I kind of like the challenge of having to prove myself. I think that's just the competitive nature of, of sports in a sense. Like I tell people all the time, like. Played in high school, played basketball, ran track, wasn't a great athlete by any means. I was an average, you know, guy, whatever. Um, but the competitiveness never left. So now I try to take it and just use it into my writing. It's like, I want to be the best. I want to write the best stories and wherever that is. Um, even if you don't like what I have to say right now, you're going to read it anyways because it's me. So that's, that's kind of how I look at it. James, I, I think you'd be comfortable talking about this, but um, our Illini beat for a long time, and I can say this is a white male, has been very white male, right? Like we are very predominantly, as, as most people are in this business. That's why I've always uh, enjoyed having Shannon, Mariah, who's interned for us, Gabby, who's, who's great and is interning for us this summer. I think it's great to have different perspectives. Uh, and I, I know you've, you've worn this on your sleeve, um, but like I think it's important for our beat to have – you know, somebody who's a black male. Like, I, th I think it's important for that. Um, I, I don't think you have to write about those things, but I just think having that perspective on a beat is going to make our, our beat better. But um, does that shape you at all? I mean, I, I hate, you know, my, the labeling you is this, but like. Oh, no, don't, don't even worry. About, I mean, it's just, it's the obvious fact. I mean, yeah. everywhere I went, uh, 
99.9% of the time, I was the only black reporter um, at the times. And honestly, some places I went, I was the only black person there, period. Um, so, it, you know, people re will remember me just because of my, honestly, my skin color. So I'm walking around, people are saying, hey, that's the Romeo Bill kid. I'm like, how do you even, you know, know, you know who I am? But uh, they're like, you know, it's not that hard to remember the, the one black person you see, but um, I embrace it. I mean, I'm not going to shy away from it. I think that it's important to have tough conversations and even with people who are willing to have them. Uh, and that's why I really try to make sure that whenever I write about like societal issues, racial issues, um, the racism that I've dealt with before, um, I don't like try to make some, I don't speak for all black people. I usually try to humanize it and make it sure like I'm getting to the point of like, hey, this is how it affected me. This is how it maybe affects like a greater group of us. But um, I'll never shy away from those conversations just because I feel like regardless of what you say or what you do, these things are going to happen unless you speak up. And I've, I, and what's funny is I've really had some like, I won't say struggles with my parents about it, but like they're so, they're my parents. They want, they want me to be safe. They want me to, you know, not be as outspoken sometimes. But at the same time, they raised me to be like strong and confident in who I am. So we've had like these back and forths of like what you can say and still keep your job and things like that. But I mean, I, I embrace it. I, I, I don't like shy away from it. I think there should be more diversity on any beat. I think there should be more diversity in anything, period. Because I mean, some perspectives you enjoy might not have, simply because you just never experienced it. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It's just, you might not have ever experienced it. Um, I, I was looking at like the, the Kofi thing where you know, he got the message on Instagram and it was you know, this terrible derogatory thing. And um, you know, dealing with some of those same things that I've had as a black writer writing about Black Lives Matter and, George Floyd and getting these crazy voicemails and stuff from people. I mean, um, I would be lying if I said it didn't bother me, but I think that it will bother me more if I didn't say something. So um, I enjoy it. Um, you know, hey, I, I remember my barber telling me when I got my job at the Times, like, hey, you're going to have to cut your hair. And I'm like, nope, it's going to be nappy to the end. Like, that, hey, that's just me. So I want to be unapologetically black, to be honest. Um, I don't like try to make it like this label, but at the same time, um, I'll definitely stand in who I am. And I feel like that since if I can do that, you can do that, Joy can do that, you know, Mariah, you know, Gabby, others, that makes for a better beat and it makes for a better, you know, society in general. Totally agreed. Uh, keep doing what you do, man. Um, I, I do want to ask you, you said you got your line eye gear. Um, and we've got about 10 minutes here, but uh, you have your line eye gear. And I think this always strikes people like, Obviously, you have a connection to the university. You've rooted for Illinois. I was a University of Illinois graduate. I rooted for Illinois at certain times. How, how do you separate that? I think for a lot of fans out there, especially the diehards who've been fans their entire lives, yeah. like they really struggle to figure out, like, how do you like not be biased or root for this? So how would you explain that? Yeah, I think for me, it's, it's a little overstated, like my, my fandom for the Illini. Like I wasn't um, you know, super tied to the program as like a youngster. Um, I vaguely remember like the Darren Williams, you know, D Brown days at D Brown Jersey, but my dad isn't a huge college basketball fan. So like, it wasn't like we had a bunch of games on and I had a chance to like watch all these teams. Um, he just didn't watch college basketball. We always watched the NBA or the NFL. He's like the word college. So now it's funny because we got like argue over what to watch, you know, when I was living with them, it's like, you know, we turn the line on and, and things like that. But um, it's easier, I think, to, to get away from that now, just because I've been away from the beat for a little bit. So it's not as, um, I guess, as, as touch and go as, as if I had just graduated and just, you know, jumped onto this line I beat. Um, I cheered for him. I enjoyed it. But at the same time, um, I think it just comes down to just keeping the stories objective. You're going to have an opinion. I think people kind of get confused about what reporters do like we report the news and, and things that happen but we also have columns and podcasts and things where you give your opinion people might not always agree with it but that's the nature of the business we want to create conversation we want you to engage with us so um i don't think there will be a challenge to that um especially because i left chicago guy <laughs> so i don't have to like worry about you know uh i guess squeaking out like a cheer for him but all jokes aside i mean um i was pretty much taught when i when i entered with ap to like just keep it professional at all times. Um, you know, don't say we when referring to the Illini and things like that. Um, but I don't think it'd be too hard. It's just like the clothes, seriously. Like, I, it, not even like just that I plan to wear a bunch of Illini. It's just like what I have. 
Um, you know, it's dry fit. Don't got to iron it. So I just, just throw it on and, you know, look pretty good for the day. So um, that has changed. I have to like bust up the iron, you know, today for, for the first time in a while. So, um, you know, it, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a unique situation. I think people are, will be understanding of like, hey, you did graduate from this university. So of course, there's going to be that personal tie to it. But as far as the teams go, um, you know, hey, I'll keep my stories, my stories and occasionally give my opinion here or there. But um, I don't know if, you know, 20 years from now, writing about the NBA, someone asked me about LeBron, then I, I don't know. I might have to temper my, my, my biasness or whatever. But for now, I think I'll be OK. <laughs> I think what people don't understand who aren't in the field is like in the middle of a game, it's hard to really care like one way or another how the outcome shapes them because it's also transactional it's like okay this happened now this is what yeah. I, what my lead turns into and what I write about and then before you know it the game's over and you've just thought about like angles in your mind you don't even have time to really care who wins or who loses yeah. I say that and I'm not on the Packers beat and thankfully I'm not on the Cardinals <laughs> marathon of a beat but like it's just to me like my friends I try to explain it to my friends all the time I'm like I don't even like outside of like the two teams that I get very, very into the Packers, I don't really know. Like, could you even watching sports? My mind is just different thinking like, okay, this is what it is. I don't, I don't really, I don't know if any of that makes sense, but like, it, it's just such a, a job. You don't even think about it anymore. And and then next thing you know, someone's obviously winning and losing the thing. Right. I think for me, the, the, the ties for me is usually when I do like a feature. Um, and it's not necessarily like I, I'm rooting for them to win because I mean, even people who like, you know, give all the glory to God for winning and things like that. I don't, I don't knock it at all. I believe in God myself, but I also think that God doesn't really care who wins or loses the game most of the time. Cause I mean, there's, and that's the beauty of sports. Like sometimes it's like this beautiful story that kind of just fits. And you're like, man, like this just had to happen this way. Like, for example, I did a story um, on a kid that passed away, unfortunately at high school um, that I covered in like that, that Friday, they, they went out and won their game and shut the team out. It was like 36 to zero or something like that. I mean, it was like, you know, all the stars aligned where they had this crazy performance. They got to put Tim in on the field for the last play and all this type of stuff. And, you know, it's a perfect ending. But there's also been like games where in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, this team deserved to win. And they didn't. And that's just how sports goes. Like you said, you can't always care. For me, the caring is about like those feature stories and getting the details right about somebody's life, what drives them, what's their why, what motivates them. That's what really like draws me into, I guess, being a fan of a person or a team or a coach. And again, it's not for them to win or lose, it's just for them to continue to succeed or find that happiness or find whatever they're looking for and what they're doing. Yeah, I'll say, man, I you're right. I, I care. I don't largely care about the outcome of any game I've ever covered. I care about the people, like the people who yeah. open up their experiences to you and share how they got here. Like, yeah, you want them to do well. You want them to have that elation. That's human nature. The outcome, I mean, that's fine. But if they walk out of there happy, like once you get to know them, that's that's so much of what this this job is. Yeah. And then on the flip side, I'm always thinking to myself, I can't say that this player or this team that I'm covering deserves to win because there's a story or a player or a coach on the other side that probably has gone through their own thing. So it's like, again, whatever happens, it had to happen. And then you just write the best story you can, you know, based off of that. Yeah. I, I think I root for stories at times. Right. But if it doesn't work, you have to shift your focus and be like, okay, there's a different Absolutely. story here. Right. Um, all right, James, uh, we only got a couple minutes, but what uh, you're joining a beat at an interesting time with basketball, all the changes they're going through, a new coaching staff, which I think is great for you. You kind of get to know them and grow with them. Um, but like, how do you attack this beat over the, the summer and into the first football season? I think it's just getting like plugged in with the rhythm of like the summer. I'm also enjoying this because we've texted a few times. It's like, this is the time of year in preps, like the spring preps really get crazy. And I'm seeing all the like, you know, softball games I'll usually be at, baseball games, things like that. So um, for me, the transition is kind of just getting used to the faces, the different people um, and the formalness of it all. I mean, I can't just, you know, text Underwood, hey, you get, you're free to talk at, you know, any time today. It's kind of like a, some structure to everything. So there's pros and cons to it. But um, I think the biggest thing is kind of I'm, I'm grateful to come in where it's kind of like slower right now. And then when it revs back up, I'll be able to like, you know, hit the ground running and, and kind of like, you know, know the main players, SIDs, things like that. Like, you know, I was on the preps beat in Northwest Indiana. There weren't many SIDs. There were just coaches and parents and, 
you know, Instagram DM when a coach didn't answer and I need to get a kid on the phone, you know, so um, that would be fun. And I think the weirdest thing for me is like just seeing Underwood, like, because the last time I was here was his first year here. And, you know, seeing where the program is now. And he had like the swagger and stuff back then. But um, since then, he's gotten like, I guess, more like outwardly, uh, not like, I won't say like brass, not even cocky. It's just like, he's just super, supremely confident, which he always was. But like getting used to like, oh, like everything he said he would do, oh, they're here now. So and, and understanding that what comes with that is even more eyes. Like it was going to be a big beat regardless because it's the Big Ten. But then now having one of the premier programs in the country, um, you know, having an electric program, you know, players that are, are, are you know, transferring in and things like that. Um, it'll be a challenge to just keep up with it all. But I really tried to do my best to just read, you know, as much as I can from your stuff, Gavin, Shannon, and trying to get up to speed on like, okay, what's happened? Like who's transferred? Who's, who's here? Who's there? And, um, you know, making sure that I, I'm doing my due diligence as far as my homework. And then when I'm ingrained in it, then I can obviously, you know, anticipate things that might happen or, or, or be, you know, in the loop on certain like, you know, scoops and things like that. But right now it's just trying to make sure like I get the main points and don't miss any like major things. Like even finding out like on a college staff, there's only three full-time assistants. Like I didn't know that a week ago. I had to like make sure I knew that and looked that up and read that and things like that. So it's been fun, but um, I can look at it as like homework. You know, I'm back down here with no classes. So life is good. Great stuff. James, it's awesome to have you on the beat. Uh, congratulations on the job and uh, looking forward to getting to see you in person, man. All vaccinated here. So we're looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, but uh, James, appreciate the time, man. Thank you all for having me, man. Like, like I said, I look forward to seeing you all as well. And um, yeah, my, uh, my my whole family's been vaccinated for a while. We were, I was on like seven different lists from Indiana, Illinois. I was on every single thing. When I went to get my shot, uh, you know, I think I got it at Mariano. He was like, how'd you even get it? I was like, I had my press pet. Hey, I'm with the news. I'm a, you know, I'm an essential worker. You know, I've never used that ever for anything, but I was like, I need to like get on this. So uh, I'm excited for things to, not only for us, but just, the athletes, the teams, the season itself to be hopefully a little bit smoother than it was, you know, uh, last year. Absolutely. Uh, our time's about to run out of my Zoom, but James, that was awesome, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, dude. Have a good one.